Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Let me start as I usually do with the children. Who do you think, children, is the strongest person in this church? Measured by, I don't know, muscle or whatever. This isn't a competition. If you don't name, I will name somebody. Okay, I'm going to name Brother Tyler because he served in the army. I don't know if he has the biggest muscles, but he's a strong guy. Maybe um, a few others. Brother Jeremy's got uh, some big muscles. Brother Daniel's got some big muscles. Let's take the youngest person in their family, okay? Uh, Tyler Barron or um, Stephen, who is uh, Daniel's child, is too young, but maybe Noah and Sandeep's family or Micah and Sunil's family. <clears throat> Do you know that it's possible to lift your father? This might say, oh my gosh, that's impossible. How is it possible for the smallest person in this room to be the strongest? And I was thinking about that in the context of not just what we heard uh, just now, which is a really good message. You know, Brother Sandeep has spoken many times about falling into the lap of Jesus. That's in essence what uh, Brother Zach was sharing just now. And in that perfect peace comes enormous amount of strength. And Brother Bobby last week was talking about how when we take on the yoke of Jesus, which is humble and um, learn from him humility, we can walk alongside with that yoke that gives us an enormous amount of strength. So I would like to, Brother Sham, if you can put up this picture. This is the secret that you put up this picture. A very simple principle in physics called Archimedes principle. If you can put up that slide. This is how Baron will be able to carry Tyler. And this is how Noah will be able to carry Sandeep. Uh, Archimedes was a physicist and a mathematician about a few hundred years before Jesus. And he said, give me a, a, a lever and a fulcrum and a place to stand and I can move the earth. Okay, so there's a picture of Archimedes on one side. I was sharing this on that Tuesday night Bible study an old physicist man, and on the other side is the earth, the heaviest thing that you could think of. How is it possible? And we all know this. When we were little kids, we played with our kids on a seesaw. And this is the principle of a seesaw. And I'm not going to give you a physics lesson, but it's very simple. The weight of one person times the length must be the weight of the other person times the length. That's how, it, that's how the seesaw balances. So when I had Sophia as a little girl, you get really close to it, and she could be at the far end of it, and it would balance. And then when we had two twins, you could put both of them and could balance. So to me, this is a great picture of that perfect rest when we submit ourselves completely to the Lord and we say, Lord, um, make the impossible possible for me, right? If you go to Matthew 17, we can leave this picture up there while I'm sharing Matthew 17. It's a great story about how this man came to uh, Jesus and said, please help my son. My son is struggling. He's um, a lunatic. He gets ill. He's filled with a demon. I came to your disciples and your disciples could not cast the demon out. And then Jesus cast the demon out. And then he asked, the, the disciples asked him, why were we not able to do that? And then Jesus said in verse 20, because of the littleness of your faith, but then he goes on to say, if you had faith like a mustard seed, you can move this mountain. And it will move and nothing will be impossible to you. And we also know in Matthew 19, it says, Matthew 20, it says, with God, everything is possible. Nothing is impossible. So if you go back to what we read last week from Brother Bobby in Matthew 11, verse 28, this is to me the essence of that coming to rest. Come to me, those of you who are weary and heavy laden. And whatever that world is that you're carrying on your shoulders that you feel is impossible. Um, we had two sisters who gave their life to Jesus in baptism the last several weeks, both named Sophia. They said, Lord, I'm desiring to follow you in everything that feels like a giant. You're going to help me with this type of lever overcome. 
That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Come to me, those who are weary and heavy laden. As we've heard, come into my lap and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. This picture to me is beautiful because the fulcrum and the lever is, is God who helps us. And like Brother Bobby said, yes, last week, the senior ox is helping the junior ox walk the walk together. The senior ox first is Jesus helping me. But then at some point in time, it becomes me for another younger brother or you sisters with a younger sister. Uh, because it says, as, <clears throat> follow me as I follow Christ. Take my yoke upon you, Matthew 11, verse 29. Learn from me. And the learning from me isn't the strength and muscle. Thank God for strong and muscular brothers in this, in this church. But learn from me because I'm gentle and humble and you will find rest for your souls. So it's almost the antithesis. In the, in, in the heavenly kingdom, the weakest person can be the strongest. The weakest person can be the strongest. The last will be first and the first will be lost. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And before we know it, we're moving the mountains, we're moving the world. So keep this picture in your minds, uh, young children especially, as you battle a big, what seems like the world in front of you <clears throat> at school. Maybe it's the pressure of your friends. So much today, especially in your teenage years, is peer pressure. Everybody is doing this. That feels like that big world that's putting pressure on you. And you feel, no, I can't move that. Lord, I need help. Take my yoke upon you. Help me to, to sit on that seesaw and you can help me balance that out. I need your grace. Or maybe it's a besetting sin that you've, you're, that's like feeling like a Goliath. Lord, help me overcome. It just took, David was a young boy and he could take down the and the Bible is full of stories of little Davids that took on Goliaths, like this picture. So I pray it will be the same. And for those of us who've, who've gotten into some area of rest or victory, our obligation is to look for the others in the church who need some encouragement, to come alongside them and share with them this picture. Um, and then they can also enter this, and then we can all run that race together. Amen.